All right, people, how to never get a job, all right? Because I know a lot of you are always asking me, hey, how do I get a job? Well, guess what? Let's work on how to never get a job, and then we can go backwards from there, okay? So number one, so you have the coding skill. You are really good at it, and you want to get a job. You have to improve your, let's see, you say you want to improve your skills and become a better programmer, but your actions tell me otherwise, and your actions always speak louder than words, this article is coming out the gates, and it is hot. All right, I, I'm loving this, okay? I'm loving this right off the rip. This is going to be super exciting. Here we go. As we enter a more complex financial environment and companies are laying a lot of people off, it has never been easier to lose your job or be unable to get a new one. In this article, I want to present to you a step-by-step -step approach to guarantee that you won't get a new job. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, yeah, the article is assuming. You're absolutely right. The article is assuming. Assuming you're, you're a piece, okay? And guess what? Maybe I agree with them. Maybe I also think the same thing about you, okay? All right, first off, nice wallet, jerk. What's that thing? Uh, let's see. Always stick to your current tools. Message for the typescripters. Message for the typescripters. Always stick to your current tools. Be overconfident in your skills. You know enough. You have learned jQuery in 2017. That's great. It gets the job done, and maybe you're even able to make a few portfolio websites back then. Why would you waste your time learning new technologies if tool you already know works just fine? Sure, it creates less maintainable code in the end. Actually, unsure about that argument with jQuery. I don't know if you've been in large React projects, okay? Oh, no, trust us. Trust us. This is maintainable code. By the way, every two years, React will change its mind and completely deprecate everything you've written forever and ever and ever and ever and trust us it's actually good after did not create a twitter movement don't worry um sure it creates less maintainable code in the end it isn't as modular and doesn't fit the architecture more complex modern applications but it works also nice period also it's not like the other tools uh like react or Vue don't have their own problems and why would you add problems to your life Hell yeah, girl. Um, you should learn, obviously, some sort of top-down rendering type system like React or any of those because it's, it's good to understand kind of how the UI works. And then you pick a real proper library like SolidJS or something like that. Don't switch up paradigms. You're a front-end developer at heart. That's right, you pixel miner. Whoopsies, I just pressed check mark. I don't, I, what, wait, what the heck, what did I just press? I hate these sites where when you highlight something, little bubbles pop up. You know what? I'm reading, okay? I don't need your bubbles. I don't need your bubbles. I don't need your bubbles in my business, okay? Don't worry. The recession will end. Chat Jeopardy will shut down, and your skills in designing beautiful browser boxes will stay relevant forever. Love it. Don't look into other aspects of programming like backend or DevOps or security. You don't need that extra work time that you could instead spend on the latest Netflix series. Okay, hey, you know what? Streamberry does produce some good stuff, okay? Okay, I'm just saying, I'm not talking bad about some of the Streamberry stuff. And hey, The Witcher's about to come out, okay? I, I'm just saying, like, you can spend some time on it, you know what I mean? Just, like, not all the time, okay? Uh, I really... I wait for a job offers to come to you. Let's admit it. Applying to jobs is hard. Dude, with... what? Dude, nothing is... Okay, so real talk about applying to jobs. There is nothing more inferior... Where's my bubble? Okay, now I highlight and there's... Okay, there's the bubble. Um, no bubble, bubble, no bubble, bubble, <laughs> I found a bug, I should be a QA, give me a job, whatever website this is, um, let's admit it, applying to jobs is hard. You need to maintain an always updating resume, search for companies, go through interviews, and probably get rejected by some of them. My guess is that it does not bubble for complete senses nope my guess is that it doesn't bubble for anything that starts at the first character nope and it bubbles again damn it i've been had wait what happened if you start on a period damn it okay i have no idea how i how i had that for a moment anyways all this stress why bother applying uh for jobs when you can just sit back relax and wait for the offers to come to you i recommend you avoid all job search websites and don't bother networking keep irrational hope that off job offer uh falls into your lap without any effort on your part so this is actually extremely good advice which is when you are looking for a job networking is huge most of your jobs are going to probably come 
from you knowing somebody else. Like knowing somebody, being able to interact with somebody, being able to prove to somebody you're a competent coder is just an amazing experience to be able to uh, get people to like, uh, you know, get you a job. It's like, it's, it's really, really important. So I would highly recommend networking. In the rare case that a job offer does come to you in some mir miraculous way, um, it shouldn't be mir miraculous. It's important to keep this one crucial step in mind, whether it's during the technical interview or the take-home task. If you ever feel stuck, give up. Okay, so a big thing about tech interviews is that you have to be able to stay focused. You have to, like, I always, every single time I get asked any question in a tech interview, I completely and absolutely go, I don't know the answer. I don't know it at all. I don't know how to approach any further. And I have to like take a step back and go, okay, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I actually do know the answer. Let's just step through what I know. Okay. What do I know about data structures? What is linked list, arrays, trees, graphs? Okay. Now that I know those things, let's take the next step. What does this problem look like? What can I draw out of this problem? How can I, you know, go from point A to point B? And you have to kind of take these steps slowly. And honestly, it gets really easy to solve a lot of these problems. I have virtually never practiced a, I think I've probably done a total of, maybe 20 leak code uh, questions in my entire lifetime. And the reason why I can successfully do interviews is because I just know data structures and algorithms well. And you can just apply that to almost every single problem you're going to uh, interact with. Um, it just makes life a lot easier if you go that route. And so whenever you, give, you get stuck, just taking a step back and walk through what you know is huge right? It's not like they're going to be, uh, it's not like uh, they are paying uh, you for it anyways. The actual job was probably going to be too low and uh, too low. Make up any other excuses you find fitting and then let's see, and just get back to your own super interesting, stress-free life. This opportunity, this opportunity came from nowhere. So probably a lot more will come. <laughs> it's true. Uh, so I, I, I like this. I love this piece of advice. Uh, as long as you can apply that, that the giving up part. I think that's the hardest. Does I hear anyone here? Does anyone in here kind of like, do you struggle in the technical interview? Press one in the chat if you struggle with the technical interview. All right, how about this one? Let's see, I don't know. I've only done one in my life. How about how about this one? Let's, let's invert it. 69 in the chat if you don't struggle with technical interviews. Okay, so there is, there is definitely a lot of non-strugglers as well. Okay, so so it's kind of it's kind of both. So here's the real question. Okay, so just so just a real question. It's this can be a two part question. Out of all the people that have pressed one, how many of you have practiced tons of lead code questions? How many is tons? M more than fifty. So there are a lot of zeros in here, which is a bit surprising, which is kind of interesting. How about this one? Out of all the people that struggle, type one in the chat right now if you have a strong grasp on data structures and algorithms. You should struggle a bit. No, you shouldn't. You, there's no should. There's no, there's absolutely no should. Okay, interesting. Some zeros and 0.5s, some question marks. I don't know, I just find it interesting because I, personally, strong grasp, you know, uh, you can do a you can do a linked list stack, queue. Uh, you can build a binary tree, general tree. You can depth first, breadth first search, compare two binary trees, do Dijkstra's algorithm, do a couple sorting algorithms. Like you understand how to do a binary search is a pretty simple thing. Uh, a heap, you should know what a heap is. Uh, let's see, uh, I had a great piece of advice from my mother-in-law that the biggest issue with the current education system is that it teaches people patterns uh, to memorize rather than understanding the actual process. Yeah, that's pretty good. You should be able to assert dominance in an interview and just write it in rust. I love that part. I uh, know, but real talk, like I don't, I don't think struggling in, in an interview is a requirement. I think the thing is, is that clear communication is the requirement. So if you understand the problem and you know how to solve it, you like the thing that the interview is looking for the, the, is that they want to know that you can hear what they say, conceptualize it, turn it into a step-by-step -step like answer and be like, here's what you said. Here is how I'd answer it. Here's what the complete solution would look like. And I'm going to take all these ideas upstairs and I'm going to turn it into code that you can understand, right? Like that's really what I like to look for. If you can do that without like any hesitation, I am shocked. Now, most people struggle in some way and that's totally fine and a big thing is can you recover from struggling that's like also a big thing so me as the interviewer i'm going to be really there trying to help you yeah big companies test dp sometimes i know but those are so stupid honestly like when they're like give us the maximum sub array you're just like gosh dang it 
I don't remember how it works. Let's just try to play around with it. And you're like, maximum subarray. Okay, how could it possibly work? Well, if at any point it goes uh, zero or negative, then that means the, the that is the maximum part is within there. Okay, da, 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 right? I hate I hate that. Any good DSA course, funny you should say that. I have a free one on front-end masters right here. Free forever. Um, I was a memorize-only student, and now I struggle visualizing complex recursive functions. Yeah. Dynamic programming, definitely not this. Uh, just real talk, like knowing those, incredible what you can open the doors with. I don't think Lee Code is a great way to become prepared for interviews. I just don't. I truly, truly don't think it's good. I think understanding fundamentally the basic algorithms are going to get you 90% of the way and just make you more useful in actual programming. You know what? No one cares that you can solve the, the cityscape program or the cityscape problem. No one cares. No one cares. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No one cares. Right? No one cares about your two sum, right? If leak code is fun, knock yourself out. Great way to train, right? It's a great way to apply what you know to continuously practice. Fine. Enjoy it. I like problem solving. I kind of like doing problem solving stuff. I was I I I got regionals in ACM programming competition. I was kind of into it, right? Like I used to do it a lot. In college, I was totally into ACM programming competitions. I get it. You know? Lead code is necessary if you want to be into Fang. Uh no, it's not. I'm in Fang. I got into Fang before there was such thing as Lead code. I got into a second Fang without ever doing a thing of Lead code. I've been I've had offers in three Fangs without ever doing Lead code. Netflix, by the way, you don't have to do it. Lucky guy, maybe maybe it was luck, but I personally like to think that it was uh, a decade of applying myself extremely hard and having an opportunity to show my skills. <laughs> That's me personally. Maybe I'm different. Uh, never challenge yourself with coding projects. Programming is a job. It isn't a hobby. Use your free time for uh, stuff that's less labor uh, labor intensive. Play video games, watch TV, and daydream about the future. You're going to code a lot in your future career anyway, so why bother now? Don't even try to contribute to open source. FOSS is a scam. You, you shouldn't code for other people to, uh, for free. Exactly, because GitHub Copilot's going to steal all your codes anyways. Just use what the open source community creates and never give back. 100%. Stay on the surface. Don't bother with the intricacies of the tools you are using. Why would you learn how React works under the hood or how TCP handshakes work? Who cares your language server communicates with your editor? I actually really love this paragraph right here. This is this might be my favorite piece of advice of all time. The fact that most people don't even realize, like, I mean, how many times? So one thing that just makes me understand you've never looked into the tools is when people be like, oh, yeah, well, you know, uh, VS, uh, VS code autocomplete to blah, 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 blah. And you're like, well, actually it's a language server and that's available everywhere. Just saying, just saying what you're saying is not quite right. I don't know if you know this, uh, and IntelliJ autocomplete is greater than LSP. Now, now IntelliJ on the other hand, actually built their own thing, right? That's different. Uh, it's just, it's different. Let's see, uh, VS Code Python autocomplete is proprietary now. Is it, act wait, did it went proprietary now? I, I thought uh, PyLance was always proprietary. Unless you're talking about C++ and TeleSense or a PyLance. Well, yeah, uh, JetBrains has CLion, which has a lot of their own stuff. Totally okay with that. All right, totally okay. Uh, who the hell spends their entire life? No one spends their entire life studying for a $60,000 job. But you got to get a $60,000 job. Okay, buddy. Okay, because here's the deal. When you do nothing and the other million people do stuff all the time, guess who ain't getting that? You know what I mean? Uh, that's just how it works. Uh, treat all these like black boxes and never look deeply into them. Even if it breaks, it's not your problem. It's the problem of the person who made it in the first place. Going back to the first point, stick to the tools you know, including your editor. Vim or Emacs or these other extent, uh, extensible, customizable editors are nerdy waste of time. You're better than that. This is actually a very common view. <laughs> Ignore the benefits of content creation. On the topic of never giving back, you shouldn't educate others. By the way, this is not an educational channel as I've been accused. 
of, okay? Uh, you are uh, you are good at what you do, so you should guard your secrets. So why waste your time creating content like blog posts, tutorials, or even tweets? Don't bother contributing to the community or building your personal brand. Ignore the fact that content creation can lead to per, uh, professional opportunities and help establish your expertise in the industry. Remember, staying in your comfort zone and never sharing your knowledge is the secret to staying ahead of the curve. Hell yeah, this is a lifestyle channel. It's slowly going to become my workout channel here soon. Avoid professional development opportunities. By this time, you're almost guaranteed. By the way, one little bit on this one. Even if you don't ever create content, try building a course. Real talk. Try building a course. It's actually incredible the amount of things you will learn on a topic you already know a lot about. Do you know what I mean? Hey, Prime, how much do I have to pay for an interview for you? Here's the deal, Alex. You're asking which means it's too expensive. It's crazy how much you will learn just writing through everything because that means you have to take what you kind of know in nebulous form and defend it into concrete form, which is shocking how much you've assumed you know versus how much you actually know. <clears throat> By the way, it is $5 a month. Even if you get Twitch Prime, that's for free, except for the 80 or 120 or whatever it is, costs you a month a year you're paying. Use that. Uh, let's see, avoid professional development opportunities. By this time, you're almost guaranteed to not get a job. Wait, you mean you're guaranteed to get a job? But just to put the nail in the coffin, you should avoid all professional development opportunities. This includes networking, making friends who are also programmers, and participating in hackathons. You should also ignore any programming content on the internet, like courses for free, uh, for courses or free YouTube videos, don't bother participating in anything that could potentially enhance your skills, knowledge, or brand image. Uh, at the end of the article, I want to remind you that life is short. You're not always going to have tomorrow. Enjoy today and make sure you spend as much time possible not working. Get out of bed late in the day. Never exercise. Scroll social media. <laughs> this is actually super good. Uh, you know this last one? I personally find that when I scroll Twitter, I actually get anxiety every single time. I can actually like feel it boiling up. When I make it past like the first two pages, I can feel anxiety. It's crazy. It makes me like sick. I don't want to use it. So I like, I stay away from scrolling. I don't read Twitter almost anymore. It's just like, ugh. I, I literally only shit post at this point. It's too scary. It's too much. It's too much. Doom scrolling YouTube shorts. I also stay away from uh, shorts. For this exact same reason, I, I, I feel like it would suck my time away. Um, thank you, Bill Burr. I like the Bill Burr compliment. Uh, I'll also accept Steve Carell, even though you did spell his name like a crazy person. That's not how his last name's, uh, you know, typed. Uh, looking, uh, li like looking at a car crash. I don't want to see it, but I can't look away. Lately, I've had, uh, see, I have had O Camel Manual on my phone in an open tab, and I'm just reading the whole thing in downtime. Interesting. I like it. I like it. It's not a bad idea. I was doing that with Zig, right? I think it's pretty good. Uh, for, me personally, I can't recommend any of the free the free th things. I think Front End Masters, personally, again, is my favorite place to go. Here's my courses, which none of them are actually front end, but there's tons of front end stuff on it, and so I think that they're one of the best. Uh, solution to the NPM mess. Um, ugh, I don't. I don't think that. Well, also, when is blue hair? There is no blue hair. Stop asking for the blue hair. The name is the blue hairigen.